Now we want to look at the idea of what we call a combination. Now a combination is in somewhat similar to a permutation. There is, there is a counting technique that we're looking at. But really the diff, big difference between combinations and permutations is that combinations are where we don't consider order to be important. So we're looking at a situation, if you have a look at the NCR notation, now we've dealt with the NCR notation when we've done binomial theorem last year. But in this case with the NCR notation, this is, gives us the number of unordered selections from R objects, of R objects taken from N objects. So the NCR, N factorial on N minus R factorial times R factorial, very similar to the permutation notation, which was just the N factorial over the N minus R factorial, but really we, we're dividing as well by R factorial, which is basically the situation that we're looking at because order's not important, any group of, say, three objects, A, B, C, whether we write them as B, C, A, and A, C, B, C, B, A, and, and all those forms, doesn't really, doesn't really matter, and there's the six ways we can write three objects, they all get considered as one, as a combination, because it's, the order's not important. So we're just collecting a group of things. We're not collecting an, a group in some sort of order. So that's why we basically take our uh, permutation uh, uh, calculation and divide it by R factorial because that's how many objects have been doubled or multiplied by a factor, a factor of R or factorial of R. So how, let's have a look at some questions. We've got a class of 20 students. Two are being selected as class prefix. So... If the selection is made at random, how many ways is the selection possible? Well, what we're looking at is how many different ways can we select two students from a group of 20? Order's not important. The question we're, we're, we're sensing in the question that the order's not important because they're just prefix. They're not in any hierarchy there. So 2C, 20C2 gives us 190, throwing in the calculator. A group of eight tennis players all have an equal chance of being chosen in a team team can only have five players how many ways can the team be selected so we've got eight people and we've got fine well how many groups of five can we get from the eight there's 56 different ways because it's ac5 notation again order doesn't matter it doesn't matter whether you get selected first or you get selected fourth you're if you're in the group you're in the group so and that's all that's mattering in, the, in these problems. So we're trying to infer from the question whether there's an order. If there's an order that's taking place, then it's a permutation. If there's no order, then it's a combination. We've got a committee of three women and five men from selected from seven women and seven men. How many ways can we get a committee? Well, we're going to get three women out of seven and five men out of seven and the number of different committees that can be chosen is the 7C3, 7C5, so it gives us 735. So that's the total number of groups that could be chosen. So keep that in mind for the next part because we want to find the probability. So we've got a married couple in the group. So find the probability they will be both selected. Now the way that we can look at this with our counting techniques is look at the idea if they're both going to be in that group, then the other two women have to come from the six remaining, and the other four men have to come from the six remaining. So they're the number of groups that it would include a marriage, uh, the married couple over the 735, because that's the total number of groups, which would be 15 out of 49. Now, that's, that's using our counting techniques. The other way to look at it is, well, what's the probability of, what probability has a woman got of being selected in the group, and what probability has a man got of being selected? So we've got 3 out of 7 and 5 out of 7 gives us the 15 or 49. So we can look at it either way. Both ways are going to give us that same probability. So whether we use some of the techniques we sort of looked at with the two-unit course or we use our counting techniques that we're playing with here now, doesn't really matter. Either way, we're going to get that correct probability. This one, we've got 25 students who study drama and three to be chosen to play. How many ways can this be done at random? Well... You got three, 25 C three because you're getting groups of three from 25. So 2,300 different ways we can get groups of three students. 
if a brother and sister both do drama, find the probability that neither of them will be selected for the play. Well, if neither of them are going to be selected, then you've got two basically out of the group. So how many groups of three can you get from the 23 remaining students over the total number of groups of 25C3? That gives you 77 on 100 when you put that into the, in the calculator. Or again, you could look at it this way. Probability that they're not selected would be 23 out of 25 for the first, and then 22 out of 24, because there's no replacement, then 21 out of 23. Do that calculation, gives us the 77 on 100. An excursion this time has been arranged for 31 students. There's only room for 20 students on the bus. If the 20 students are selected, how many ways can this be done? Well, we're looking for groups of 20 out of groups of out of 31 total. That can be done 84,627,315 ways. A lot of ways you can get groups of 20 from 31 students. This is some of my favourites. Like to win lotto, uh, you've got to choose six numbers out of 45. How many ways can this be done? And it's 45C6. So because you're picking six numbers out of 45. And that would be 8,145,060. Compare that, and you guys might not remember. Uh, before it went to 45, they used to have 44 uh, balls in Lotto. And this was a while ago now. They changed to 45 balls in Lotto a long time ago. But when it was 44C6, there was only 7,059,052 combinations. So adding one ball, it's interesting to see, adding one ball gave them another, well, over one more million combinations that could occur. Which, that, that's, adding over one, nearly one-seventh of what they already had. So increasing it by one-seventh, which is a lot by just adding one more ball in Lotto. Here's a, here's a comparison of Powerball. If you don't know how Powerball works, basically you've got a barrel of 45 balls, which you have to pick five from, and then you've got another barrel of 45 balls, separate barrel, where you pick one ball from. Now, you get 45... How many ways can you get five balls from 45? Well, that's 45C5. And you can, and there's only 45 ways you can get the one ball coming out of the other one. But together, when you multiply that, because you've got to get all of those five there correct, and all the and that one correct, gives you fifty four million nine hundred seventy nine thousand one hundred fifty five. So you can start to see why Powerball often jackpot pa, jackpots. Um, and as I speak, the jackpot of Powerball is sixty million dollars this week. When it was up fifty million last week, it didn't go off. It's gone up to sixty million this week. So because there's so many combinations that can occur in Powerball compared to Lotto, then it, it does have a big chance of, of jackpotting in number of weeks because, well, basically, if you you need to get at least two and a half, or nearly two and a half times uh, every person in Australia buying two and a half games for every combination to be covered because so, it's nearly 55 million different combinations so that's a lot of combinations to cover so that's why you start to see uh powerball jackpotting more than lotto lotto sometimes will jackpot not very often because there's not as many to cover what's the probability then of winning the first prize in lotto if you play four games well there's four games out of the 45 c6 well your odds coming down to one in two million still not great <laughs> find the probability winning if you play 100 games well, 100 out of 45C6, which is 5 in 407,253 as a simplified fraction. Still not very probable. <laughs> but it's better than zero. Keep that in mind. If you don't have a ticket, you can't win. This time we've got 30 people applying for a special housing package. Only 12 packages are available and allocated randomly. What's the probability that a particular person applying will get a house? Well... If a, one person gets a house, that means there's 11 packages left and there's 29 people to choose from. So that would be, and the total number of people, of packages, 12 people can be selected from a group of 30 there. So 29C11 over 30C12 gives us two fifths. The other way to look at it, 
you've got 30 packages available, 12, what's the problem, what's your chances of getting? Well, it's a 12 in 30 chance, or two-fifths of a chance. There's a, there, you can see the ways of writing it from our notation of counting and our work we've done with two units. Out of the 12 packages, five are in Sydney, seven are in the Blue Mountains. It's 19 apply for the Sydney houses, the rest of five apply for Blue Mountains. How many ways can the houses be allocated? So that would be a 19C5, because you've got 19 people applying for Sydney, and five, only five, so we can only get five, how many ways can we get five, groups of five out of groups of 19? And out of the 11 Blue Mountains packages, there's seven to be uh, had there. So groups, there's 11 C7 groups of seven out of 11 there, which gives us 3,837,240. We've got to get a school committee made up of five teachers, 14 students and three parents, and they've got 12 teachers, 25 students, seven parents applying. So you can see that you want 12 C5, the five, groups of five teachers out of 12, groups of four students out of 25, and groups of three parents out of seven gives you a very large number, 350,658,000. If Jen and her mother both apply, what's the problem with they're both chosen for the committee? Well, that means you still have any what any amount of teachers you like, but there's one less student and but one less place. So you're looking for th groups of three that will be that will be able to go with Jan out of the 24 remaining students, and the groups of two parents out of the six remaining parents. Uh, that will go with Jan's mother, because Jan and her mother are both on the committee. So that's why it's 24 C3, 6 C2. Over the total now the combinations gives us a 12 in 175 chance. We have a sample of three coins, taken from a bag containing eight ten cent coins and eight twenty cent coins. So basically, if we can get any selection, well, there's sixteen coins, and we can get three different coins chosen out of the sixteen. And what's the probability that one particular ten cent coin will be chosen? If two ten cents and one twenty cent joint chosen, so if one ten cents already chosen, that means we've only got one ten cent piece to be chosen out of the seven remaining. And we've got one out of the eight 20 cent pieces to be chosen. So the one times a 7C1, 8C1 over 16C3, which is the total, gives us a one tenth of a chance of getting that a particular 10 cent coin. And this one, we've got a group of students who are going to go uh, on a hike. And we've got a group of eight from 30. So we can get that. 5,852,925 ways. Out of the 12 teachers, two are chosen, chosen to go on a hike. How many ways can the teachers be selected? Well, that'd be 12, groups of two out of 12. Gives us 66 of those. And Mr. Baldwin's favourite student is Paula. Find the probability they'll both be chosen. Well, again, you can look at it this way. Mr. Baldwin's chosen, so there's one, one teacher out of the 11 to be chosen. And if Paul has already been chosen, then there's 29 students out of the seven. Over the total, gives us 245. Or, Mr. Baldwin's got two two chances in the 12 to be chosen, and Paul's got eight chances in the 30 to be chosen, which gives you the 245 as well there. So you start to see the idea, that if order doesn't matter, then doesn't we don't have to pick any particular order, they can occur anywhere. So we have to use that, that combination notation. So keep that in mind all the time. You're going to have to pick up your inference skills to make sure you look at a question and, and be able to realise whether it's got order if it's or if it hasn't got order that's being important. If the order's important, then we go with a permutation. If the order's not important, it becomes a combination.